Hello for my flair bliss, welcome to Angels of Death episode Eddie. Now this portion of the game particularly focuses on one of the floor bosses, if you could call them that, who was the one who tried to dig Rachel a perfect grave, one that would reflect her beauty in the eyes of Eddie. So let's see what this particular spin-off takes us to. Also heard that this is a prequel to the events of Angels of Death, so we get to see who Eddie was like before we get to the actual core game, which we've already played. You can check on my channel. All right, move arrow keys. Uh, pretty default RPG Maker controls, which is very nice. Let's get into it. As a universe, Angels of Death is very fascinating. Especially if you played both the game and watched the anime itself. Both, I highly recommend. But this is certainly beautiful. Hmm. What you doing, my friend? Hmm. For this grave, I'm thinking... One, two, buckle my shoe. Hey, isn't that... Three, four, knock on the door. Which spirit is trying to get out of her own tombstone? How dare you? I dug you a perfect grave. Just stay there, okay? Five, six, pick up sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, a big fat hen. <laughs> Which nursery rhyme is this? Guys, come on, you always mess around. Hey, come on, finish the song. 11, 12, dig a big grave. Hi. Eddie, you still at it? Hide and seek, play with us, big bro. What? No, I can't mess around. I have a grave to think about. We already tended to the graves for the night, though. I was wondering if this was a prequel or a sequel to the core game, but just looking at all the artwork and stuff like that, it definitely feels more like a prequel. And the synopsis as well makes it sound like a prequel. I've still got stuff to do. I'm thinking really hard about what kind of grave would be best. You always take forever when it comes to grave stuff. Because Eddie is a perfectionist when it comes to this sort of stuff, you know, folks. You can't just throw a body in there and just put dirt in it. No! It has to be perfection! It's an art form in Eddie's eyes. A new grave. How you make it? Tell me, show me! Well, that's the problem. I'm thinking about what kind of person is going into this grave. I forgot to ask. Dad, and he's off buying new stone for the graves, so I can't ask him now. Hey, like, really? Who cares? I care. Even if I'm the only one in this world, I care. Hey, Albert, do you know, do you know who's going in this grave? Hey, Eddie. Albert. Hey. H hey. Shut up. How the hell should I know? Wow, don't have to be rude about it. I mean, it's just digging a grave. I mean, what's wrong with that? Hey, Eddie, see? That's what you get for being Mr. Serious. Your eyes always get bloodshot when you're thinking about graves. You get so weird. <laughs> Bro. Where? Hey, don't worry about it. Alba's just in a bit of a bad mood. Eddie, I've heard a bit about this grave's owner, so I can take I can tell you a bit about her. Really? Thanks, Carl. I wanna hear too, I wanna see you too. Yes, please. A safe slot. Ooh. This grave's for a girl. A cute girl. Still real small. Probably about George's age, I guess so. 
Ah, so she died really young, huh? Hmm. Hmm, a cute little girl. The grave's base gotta be... <laughs> Tall and thin, small and round, or huge and rough? Is this a detrimental decision towards the ending of the game? Hmm, because unlike... In, in Angels of Death, the game was divided into chapters. So, in that... In that way, you would only ever get one ending at the end of each chapter. Unless, of course, games are built in a way so that chapters will then derive or disperse. No, not disperse. Diverge, depending on what choice you made in the past. But in Angel of Death, it was only ever one ending. But I don't know if this is split into different chapters or if it's just one big game. And if, that, if that's the case, then maybe your choices are detrimental towards the ending outcome. Tall and thin. She wants to grow big and tall, didn't she? Well, we can at least make her gravestone nice and big. Hey, how does girl die anyway? They found her in the forest. Her corpse, that is. They think she probably fell off some cliff. Someone saw her go into the forest. She was chasing after something, apparently. Chasing after something? She really loved cute things, that girl. So she was probably after an animal. Cool! Our family loves animals, too. We got so many pets! I wonder if she got... I wonder if she caught up to him. I mean, it would be kind of sad if she hadn't. I know, a decoration! A forest animal one, so she can always play with. Why not a wolf? Seriously? Those are just as, sc as scary in books as in real life. Really? I thought she'd like a strong guardian. Yeah, why not? Oh, choices. Unicorn? But those things don't even exist! They say little girls believe in unicorns, right? I bet she'd love to see one herself. So, tell me, what else did this girl like, besides animals? What she... liked, huh? Well, it's not like I knew her. Ah, uh, but she was always wearing dresses with various patterns. Day she died, she left the house in a dress with a red heart pattern. But when they found her body, she was banged up and so bloody. They thought she was wearing a plain dress, could hardly tell who she was. I see, but her burial dress is plain too. It doesn't sound like she'd like that. You trying to talk to the dead, my friend? I know, I'll put a pat on her grave. Flowers? Yeah, D, come on, really? Come on. Like, you can't think, oh, this is a girl, just throw some flowers in there. Huh? You mean it's too obvious? No, no, I'm saying... You're never gonna get girls like that. Wow. Thanks, my friend. That's not what I care about. F fine, we'll go with another one. Um... Stars. She was so carefree, she didn't notice that cliffhanger while playing, so... She'll want a whimsical pattern. Let's go with stars. Seems like the first choice is always the best one. Probably, I'm not too sure. Whoa, awesome! I was watching! Wow, this turned out really cool, like a grave from a fairy tale. I'm sure she'll love it. Multiple choices, but there's only one choice you can decide on. Well, it looks fine to me, I guess. Man, you are, you are really good at this. <laughs> Albert is still peed off, it seems. Who have we got here? Seems like the head of the house. Daddy! Sorry to keep you kids waiting. Take a look. Good stone, huh? They really are. These will make great gravestones. Eddie, you can tell. Your dad's eye for quality really came through, I tell you. <laughs> 
We're a Gravekeeper family here. You need to learn to tell your prime stone from plain rocks. Especially you, you're the eldest. We need you making the right calls. <laughs> they all look the same to me. Now you gotta look into the rock or the stone to tell the difference. Oh? It's about time you get home. Don't want your mother yelling at us. Come on, we're heading back. Wow, look at this. You made this, Albert? Daddy, Daddy, Eddie did it. You made it super good. I provided a word or two for advice, too. I see. Eddie, you always see things from the dead's point of view when you work. I'm real proud of you. Good job, son. What we gravekeepers do is think of people's lives and death as we make their graves. <laughs> Looks like Eddie's getting all the praise yet again. If only your brothers took the page out of your diligent book, I tell you. Albert is not the enthusiastic type about gravekeeping, then. Well, it's too late out for you, kids. Your mum's waiting. We're going home. Mommy, I want to see Mommy. Let's go. Heck yeah, boys. Alright. We're tidy up before we go. Tidying up? Come on, I'm exhausted. Hey, you leave the dead in peace and where it's clean, okay? How dare you disrespect the cemetery. Albert is... R hey, Albert! Didn't put so much as a tool away. I thought he was doing sort of well today, too. Albert was acting kind of weird again, so I'll catch up to him. Was he acquainted with the person who was put in this grave? Hey, Cole! What are you... Good grief, those boys. Wah! I'm going home too. I want to see Mommy. Wah! Oh, boy. Knew George was too young to come to a graveyard at night. Dad, you can go on ahead with George. I'll tidy up around here. I'm a little worried about Albert and Carl, too. You're not going to be scared out here by yourself, Eddie? I'll be fine. I'm a graveskeeper's son. I love the graveyard. Right, right. Well, I'll leave it to you. Come on, George. We're going to see Mommy. Well, thank you. Thanks, Eddie. No problem. Your brothers really need a page or two from your book. Especially Albert. The eldest always inherits the graveyard. Tradition. It's not always tradition, though, that the eldest takes the reins. It's the one that is most enthusiastic about the work itself. The most success. Yeah, tradition. Well, thanks. I'm counting on you. Sure thing. Our time for adventure begins. Still really hurts where Albert punched me. Well, gotta bring this pick and shovel back to the shed. Any gravekeeper worth his salt take cares of his tools. His tools are his life after all. Hey, we get to control our character now. Lovely. Lovely dovely. We got shovel and we got the pickaxe. Anything else we got to inspect while we're here? A large headstone with an ethnic design. A cross-shaped headstone. A flat, simple gravestone. A tall star patterned grave with a unicorn horn. We're telling you, it's an art form. A well sculptured gravestone. An artistic gravestone with a sleek colour. A bold, stylish gravestone. An adorable gravestone. I like all of these having different dialogue to them. It's not like copy and paste. A unique, pointy gravestone. A heavy gravestone in a classic shape. A cool grave with a black sheen. An old but durable headstone. Wait, my house is this way. The shed was the other way, right? 
No, I want to respect that other gravestone. How dare you disrespect. But anyways. We've gone over that at least once. Don't disrespect the dead. Tree. Right. What about these flowers? No. No. Okay. Uh, what about this way? i got to put these up in the shed out back. Ah. Here we go. Is this the catalyst of particular events? Hmm. Right this way. I gotta go to the shed first. Alright, the shed it is then. Phew. That about does it. But I've got a fascinating idea. And since I'm alone, I'll stop by there before I go home. The grave. It's only been a few days since I made it. I've got to check to see if the flowers are wilted. The flowers? What about the flowers? We'll go there. Oh. Hmm. Oh. That was just birds. Gave me a scare there. It's such a beautiful song, though. Just like our little bird. Oh. It's a, it's a spirit. What are you doing out here? It's not just a bird. A big bird. Was that... Was that actually... I come to the graveyard... I, 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 came to, I come to the graveyard a lot at night. A night at lot. And I'm really used to how spooky it is. That didn't even scare me, but... It was fascinating. I've never seen a ghost so up close before. And I think it was a ghost of a girl. It looked like one. Or maybe I was just imagining it. Well, hi there. Hey, Eddie. The hell are you doing? Carl, what's wrong? Dad told me to come out and get you. How come? What happened with Albert? He was... He just... Went right home and locked himself in his room. He's throwing a tantrum like usual, too. Hell, we're lucky all he's hitting is stuff. Yeah, but that's not good psychologically. Yeah, he's always been really sensitive, but he's been pretty bad lately. Hey, man. You alright? Like, Albert's been pretty rough on you recently, hasn't he? It'll be fascinating to see if any of, any of the other bosses have um, their own episodes. Like, Grey, Catherine, um, the less said about Danny, the better. And then Zach as well. I'm... I'm fine. And maybe even Rachel. It's no big deal, really. I mean, I'm sure Albert has a lot going on himself. But then again, Rachel's story was pretty well fleshed out within the core game. You knew kind of what went on in her past. And Zach for that reason as well, but... It wouldn't hurt. I'm sure Albert has a lot going on himself. Yeah. Well... Here's hoping Albert will cheer up soon. Anyway, we're going home. Yeah. But I do wonder about that ghost. That ghostly girl. What was that all about? I wonder. Will I get to see her again? Hey, hurry up. We'll get yelled at. Wait up, I'll be right there. I'm just... in <laughs> deep thought. Hello. Eddie, you were out so late, I was worried. I can't believe your father left you in the graveyard at this hour. I know you're a gravekeeper's son, but you can't do that to a kid. But I love graves, so I was totally fine. I know you're very passionate about helping out, but... And not even seeing a ghost will scare me. Eddie! But today, near the shed, there was this girl in white. Eddie, I don't want you getting out of sorts, too. Oh? Let's go inside. Take off your mask. Okay. The outside world cannot know the true identities of the gravekeepers. Mum was still pretty on edge. 
Hmm. Oops. I kept my mask on all the way to my room. But even though mum told me not to. But you know, I like keeping this on. Even inside. How could I not? This is a gravekeeper's uniform. Well, I'll just get yelled at. I'll just take it off. Hey. Phew. Does that feel less suffocating now? Heck yeah, boys. Eddie Mason. Edward Mason. Oh. I've got to take off my gloves, too. Well, I can at least keep this part of the graveyard with me at home. Oh. But... My gloves look like they're about to tear. I wonder if I can get a new pair. Mum. It looked like she wasn't in her in the best mood, so... I think I'll ask my dad. Yeah. He complimented me today, too. Yeah. He'll give me a new pair. Mm, he'll buy you a new pair. Or you buy a new pair yourself. Lots of book and paper. Books and papers. Very narrative driven so far, I like that. Scan the papers from my studies. Not a lot of room to explore and a lot of dialogue. A variety of scattered stone samples for my studying to see whether or not they're good or not. Good for gravestones. Save in the house. Ah, oh, come on. Everything all right there? My oldest brother's room. There are holes he's punched in the wall. Yikes, there is. I mean, look at those. Those are some pretty nasty holes. Um, should there be a bird in there? Oh, I see the bird. I see a bird top left of the room. This is my second oldest brother's room. It looks like an owl about up there. What's up? She got out of her cage and won't come down from the shelf. Yeah, she's not moving. Hey, come on down. See? She won't give me so much as a hoot. Maybe being calmer about it would be more of an approachable plan. It's okay, come on down now. It's no use. There is a use. Don't you dare think that there is no way out. Hmm, what is the solution to this? If there is one. Oh, well, hello there. Ah, that diggles. Good boy. You're still sleeping? Come on, let's play. There's a lot of pets in this household. A variety of books about graves and gravestones are here. Fishes in there? And what is that up there? Um, you look like you should be in the, um, the fish tank. That was empty. Oh. I hear mum and dad. Are they in the back? I thought mum was upstairs. Unless that was the older brother. Hey, she's been really quiet. Is she tired from her walk today? I don't know. Hmm. Hello there. Ah, oh, you're all so adorable. Leave the cat be. Don't wake up the cat. <laughs> Damn it, we can walk over it. Hello, little one. God. So many lovely, adorable pets here. It's wonderful. But what's over here? An unused cage is here. Unused cage. But see, that's fine for being duplicate dialogue because they're all literally the same thing. There are tools here for making gravestone designs and placement graphs. There are tools here, yep. These kind of small ones are George's. This mask, these gloves. I took such good care of them when they were mine. I was really attached to them. This is where I keep my stuff. I use my gloves and tools the most. 
So that's why they get worn out pretty quickly. These are Carl's, my second oldest brothers. They still almost new. These are Albert's, my oldest brothers. He's the only one who always gets new stuff. As it goes within the family of hierarchy. Backup tools are in here. Is everyone okay, or is there going to be a catastrophic argument? Bread for breakfast is here. It smells good. Spices and alcohol are here. Mm. Definitely prequel as I think about it now, because what happened with um, Eddie in the core game was pretty conclusive. Eating utensils and such are here. Cooking tools are here. Cooking tools are here. <laughs> Hello. Everyone okay? I just... I just don't understand what's going on with Albert. Don't worry so much. He's just... Yeah. Maybe it's just a rough age, you know. That's not what he's acting like. He locks himself in his room, lashes out at the top... Or at the drop of a hat, and all that screaming... He's been hurting the family pets lately, too. Okay, that's very bad. Like, really bad. He may be at a difficult age, but he just wasn't this kind of kid. Oh, come on. Don't cry. You've got to keep it together. But Albert's our eldest son. What if he just gets worse? What if he took his own life? What then? In this family, it's tradition that the eldest son takes over. If we keep a close eye on him, we can keep the cycle going. And don't worry, the younger boys have it together. They'll be fine. And Albert, well, he'll come around. He'll take over as a great gravekeeper. Hmm. Was that a conversation you wanted to hear there, dear Edward? Oh. Eddie, how long have you been there? Uh, I just got here. What's wrong? Oh, well, all right then. What do you need? Well, it's my gloves. They're about to tear apart. So, I, I was wondering if I could get a new pair. New gloves, huh? Well, you do help out for most around here. Really? Actually, come to think of it. I just happen to have some of Carl's gloves that got too small for him. Huh? Carl's gloves are hand-me-downs from Albert, but those two are lazy and can be, so the gloves were still in great shape. There we go. You could just have Carl's old ones. In that case, I'd rather just keep on using my own gloves. Eddie, how about you lend me... Men how about you let me mend your gloves for you? Could you, Mom? I certainly could. Hmm. But those gloves are already too small for you, Eddie. I know. I'll mend them. So go ahead and give them to George. You really should take Carl's old gloves. That would be best. You feel a personal attachment to those particular pair of gloves because you were the one who have been using them. Okay. Well... I'll go get the gloves from Carl then. And I'll give these gloves to George later. This family's not too blessed in the pockets, you know. We can't skimp on pets and gravestones. And that's our, and there's our traditions too. And I'm really proud of you, Eddie. Because you understand all of that. You're not the oldest child. But you're the child with the most understanding of what's going on in this family. Or what happens again hand me downs again even though they're always complimenting and praising me it's called family traditions maybe I could ask again nah maybe not sounds like they're still talking about Albert in their room it is kind of family tradition no way around it I'll get Carl's gloves from the tool room and go talk to him Sounds like a great idea. Okay, we can't interact with that door. It's probably for the best that we don't. 
Probably for the very, very best. Cows, gloves were these ones. Cows are still really new looking. They'll be mine now. And mine will go to George. And then... Got gloves! Heck yeah, boys! I better hang my mask up here properly. There we go. There we go. Excellent. Now then, let me bring these gloves to Carl and ask him. Absolutely not. You cannot have my gloves. Well, hi there. Hey, come on. Not again. I'm busy. Bad dog. Aww. Aww, but... Aww, I just wanted to play. Sorry for yelling. I love you, okay? Pets. The whole family's got to take care of them. They're all treasures. All of our treasures. And if you don't think that your pets are treasures, well, there's something wrong with you. Pets are family, too. Oh. I've got to hurry over to Carl. Distraction! What about this bird? Hello. Hey, Carl. Hmm, what? Dad told me to come get your gloves as hand-me-downs. Yeah, yours are pretty beat up. Sure you can have them. Heh. <laughs> Mine are hand-me-downs from Albert, though. Still, we never do any work, so they're pretty untouched. Right, thanks. But, hey, like, I gotta wonder. Like, I'm fine with getting Albert's old stuff, but... You take this really seriously. Doesn't getting hand-me-downs kind of pee you off? It's kind of like you've just... It's like you just read our mind. Damn it. She just won't come down. Why'd she fly up there in the first place? Oh, uh, okay. So the kind of retaliation from the wall actually impacted the... The bird cage. Albert's throwing a fit in front of his room and knocked over the owl cage. Poor girl got away, but she's been so spooked since then, she just won't budge. What? That's awful. Our pets belong to all of us. How could he threaten one? Someone sure is a nice guy. Gotta say I agree, but... When I think about how the house and all will end up Albert's... It kind of makes me a lot less eager to take care of all these pets. That's... That's not right. The pets belong to the family. Exactly. Everyone has a role. Not just one person. Exactly. Eddie. Uh, what's happened now? Where? What's happened? What's wrong? George, what's the matter? What happened? What's happened? The brown rabbit! Oh. So that's why she wasn't playing. I thought she was just asleep. Then mommy and daddy came and said she was dead. Oh. She's been pretty weak lately, that rabbit. Eddie, think you can bury this one too? Of course. I'll take care of it. Right now, in fact. You can do it tomorrow. It's late. Mum's not going to let you go out. Where? I want to help too. Come on. You just pee off Albert. Eddie. You get back to your room and keep quiet too. Alright. Let me head back to my room. Do you think Albert wants the responsibility? I don't think so. This is our room. That rabbit. She was so delicate. He's been really loud at home lately, so she must have been stressed. Noise can do that. Especially if it's unknown voices to animals. Albert? What are you going to do? Just now. You were talking bad about me again, weren't you? Huh? I wasn't. I me mean, talking bad about you? And now you're hitting us? 
How? I was just saying it's wrong to threaten the animals. That, that's not talking bad about you. Shut up. I heard you. You said you didn't want any hand-me-downs. I... I... I bet you don't. Not you, the perfect little gravekeeper. You're always mocking me, aren't you? You think I can't do anything, don't you? N no, I... I mean... I'm the oldest brother, but you can do everything better than me. Maybe because, Albert, you don't commit to the responsibilities that you have been bestowed upon. And that's why you're always harping at me, isn't it? Because you don't know I can't do anything. And because you know I can't do anything, so I don't know anything. You're just mocking me. Everyone, everyone needs to shut up. Dad, Mom, you guys. Even our pets do nothing but talk bad about me. Now that's what you call extreme paranoia. But, but the animals wouldn't do something like that. But don't torment the pets like that. They belong to all of us. What? You never heard that everything of this mansion is going to be mine? You ever think about how I feel? Having all this needy garbage around me forever? But the pets belong to all of us. They're not just one person's. That's so. Then... Shut up and take their punishment. For a while, every time, Albert lost it. He would come and beat me up. None of them knew. Albert, the eldest, the heir, was always on the brink as it was. If, if the family found out, I knew he'd only get worse. And when he was beating me up, he left the rest of the family and the pets alone. So, it just dawned on me. Nothing else could be done. That was that. Still really hurts where Albert kicked me. But if he won't hurt the animals, then I can just grit my teeth. You could say that's taking one for the team, but at the same time... Absolutely not. This resolution, this, not resolution, this problem is rooted on the inside. He's the eldest, so he must be really stressed. I don't understand how he feels at all, but how could he hate the idea of our pets becoming his? No, I'm going to bury the rabbit right now. I want to make all their graves myself. Because unlike Albert, I love the little guys. And if I'm the one to bury them, I'm sure they'll be... Yeah, yeah! Let me go and get ready. Then take her to the graveyard. Excellent cool beans. Save the game. We have many save slots to use there goes Albert again he's just getting worse probably won't get better either Albert he's just not normal anymore I love working the graveyard so much more than he does and yet it's called family tradition kid unfortunately still scared huh So everyone's here. Oh, the rabbit must be in that box. I've got to put on my mask when I'm doing graveyard work. Yuck. <laughs> An irk. Alright, here we go. I've got my shovel too. But all of these are just hand-me-downs for my brothers. And these will end up handing me downs to George. Alright, no dark force. Not when I'm about to dig me a grave. Mm -hmm. So it's this box. Now, let's get going. 
I'll make sure you rest in peace. Hmm. Let's get going, Ben. Leave the house quietly. It's dark out, but weather's great. I know I can make a great grave tonight. Time to hurry to the graveyard. And we've got shift on our side. Nice. We can run. Cool. So we're here. You know, I really love the graveyard at night. I just feel so motivated all of a sudden. Like this time, this graveyard, it's all mine. Oh, I know, I'll pick some flowers. A brown rabbit, so... Yellow flowers would match perfectly. Alright, let's get picking. And I know where are some. Here we go. A grave that I've fought up. All for this little rabbit. <laughs> Got yellow flowers. Now where to put them? I think I should get some more yellow flowers. I think more yellow flowers were in the other area. That's a dead end. Yeah, these ones. Right by that gate. I'm the one who make a grave. I won't let anyone help. Got yellow flowers. You think you need some more? I just need a few more. Here we go. This should be enough. Off to the graveyard in the back. This one. Or oh, actually, is it the other one? The one up here. It's just pitch black forest back here. But I know the way. If you just move through the trees like this. Here we are. Kind of a resemblance, like the basic layout from here to the gate of that one room in Angels of Death. Which Zack destroyed. Beautiful place, isn't it? I love it here. And this is where I'll make you a perfect grave. Not going to say anything. I wish I could have said that to you before you died. There, there. I'll make you a place where you can rest in peace. There are more yellow flowers here. There are yellow flowers over there. That's where I'll bury you. Alright, I'll make your grave. Me and no one else. See? I love animals. I love animals too. This place I love. The gravekeeper tools I love. They will stop being mine. But the family's pets, they won't end up hand-me-downs. They belong to all of us, and none of us. But yet, this moment is different. When I'm making the grave of a pet that's died, then and only then. Only then, I think. Yes. This is mine. In the end, I got to make the grave to bury the pet I loved. So, her last moments, her grave too, it's all mine. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, ghost? Huh? Huh? What are you? Who are you? Whoa! Who are you, that ghost girl? Huh? Ghost? Where? Where? Um, uh, hey. I'm talking about you, you know. Me? Girl. <laughs> One without a name. <laughs> oh, come on, I'm not a ghost. But you showed up out of nowhere in a graveyard. At night. That's ghostly. I guess it is. Sorry for scaring you, but... Are you lost? 
I thought you were a ghost. Why? Well, it's that thing you're wearing. It looks like something for Halloween. You know, that pumpkin theme? Hehe. <laughs> well, it isn't. This is my family's. A gravekeeper tradition. Gravekeeper? That's right. My family takes care of graves. Oh, wow. Then... Ah, sorry for laughing. It's so round and cute, I couldn't help it. Hehe. <laughs> what is the identity of you, dear girl? What a weird girl. Her clothes were all messed up, and she isn't even wearing shoes. But her laugh is just so beautiful. Are we getting flashbacks towards Rachel? As in, Eddie wants to make her the perfect grave. Hey, I won't get in your way, so can I watch you dig this grave? Huh? Well... Wait, it's really late. Don't you have to go home? You don't have a home, do you? It's okay. I don't have anywhere to go home to. What? So, is it okay? If you keep it a secret, if you keep quiet about me making graves here, then... Then, sure, as long as you just watch. Really? Don't worry, I'll keep it a secret. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Is it kind of distracting, Eddie? There we go. Wow, it came out so well. This graves for a cute little rabbit who always perked her little ears up when she was happy. I really hope she likes the gravestone I made for her. The little rabbit in there. You must have taken great care of her. I just know she's happy. You. You think so? Yeah, I know so. I think it's a great grave where she can rest in peace. <laughs> and it's becoming daylight now. The sunrise! It's almost morning. Well, I'll get going. Wait, what's your name? Where do you live? That's a secret. <laughs> but I'll be back when it's night again. Next time we meet, I want to see you make a grave again. That sounds like bad karma to me. See you later. I'm here at night all the time, okay? And my name's Eddie. Edward. <laughs> See you again, Eddie. You really are a ghostly figure, aren't you? She's gone. She just disappeared when the sun came up. That girl really is like a ghost. Before a ghost, those cuts and bruises sure looked new. It's weird. Barefoot with tattered clothes. She could have escaped from an asylum or something. But she laughs a lot with a pretty voice. What a strange, cute girl. I hope I get to see her again. I've got to get back home before people wake up. Ugh. I think we'll do that. What a strange boy that was. I've got to get back before anyone at home wakes up. Okay. So it's kind of the same, well, the same individual, just from two different perspectives. Or, not the same person, but the same kind of circumstances. They both have quite difficult families, as it were. Or this girl lives at an orphanage, but she doesn't want to kind of be around the others at the orphanage as much as she can. Or as much as she doesn't want to. 
But that's going to wrap this episode up, folks. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, then please consider liking the video and subscribing if you have not done so already. I've already covered everything Angels of Death, game-wise anyways, on my channel already. So going through this is going to be incredibly exciting. <laughs> so thank you all so much for watching and see you all in the next time of Angels of Death episode Eddie. Thank you so much for watching and take care of yourselves.